Good morning. The Patriotic Rosary will be prayed before the 530 Mass this Wednesday, May the 10th. Please join us in prayer for Our Lady's intercession for the good of our country. First Sunday blessing of expecting parents is available after the Mass. Simply wait at the center communion rail to alert the clergy of your desire for that blessing. As a kind reminder, we ask that you please turn your cell phones to silent. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brethren, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he created which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayer. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As a number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because of their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the 12 called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Permenus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert of Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul, excuse me, St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like the living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. 
Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So, Jesus tells the apostles, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these. What's he talking about? How could we do the works that he did? How could we possibly do greater works than him? He's God. How could the apostles, how could we, fallen human beings, with our weaknesses and our failures, with our sinfulness, and for some of us with our stubbornness, ever get even close to the kind of works of the God who became man and dwelt among us? It seems pretty hard to believe. But if Jesus is really the way, the truth, and the life, like he said, and he is the one who said it, then it must be true. Now, before we all go trying to turn water into wine, which I'm 100% not against, or making the lame to walk, or the deaf to hear, or the blind to see, or healing the sick, or multiplying food, or raising the dead back to life, we really need to figure out what the real works of Jesus, the God-man, actually were. While on the surface, his miracles seem rather extraordinary, there's an underlying purpose that's even greater. And for us, it's actually much more ordinary. In fact, the underlying purpose, the true intention of his works, is what Jesus himself will entrust to these apostles just three days after this account on Easter Sunday after giving them this promise of the power to do his same works and even greater works, the power and authority to forgive, to forgive sins on earth and in heaven. This is the same power and authority, the same work that has now been entrusted to us to be experienced, to be enjoyed, to be exercised, and to be offered to one another. Putting today's gospel into context, Jesus has just finished his last supper with the apostles, where he told them, this is my body, which will be given for you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus knows this ragged bunch of followers he has called is full of people who are about to betray him, who are going to deny him, who are going to abandon him, and who are going to doubt him. He's washed their feet and he's prayed to the Father with them. And before going out to the garden on the Mount of Olives where he will be in agony before being arrested and condemned to death, he tells these guys, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. 
It's all about the forgiveness of sins and the promise of heaven, eternal life with God. And this is really the entire story of the Bible. Right? God created humanity. Humanity sinned against God, turning away from him. God promised to save humanity. God prepared a people to receive himself, the son of the woman who will crush the serpent's head. God took flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary and was named Jesus with the promise that he would save his people from their sins. He was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, was lost in the temple at the age of 12, and at the age of 30, he performed his first miracle at that wedding feast in Cana. When he was baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan River, John proclaims, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Over and over and over again in the Gospels, we hear Jesus say, Your sins are forgiven. Go. Your sins are forgiven. Take up your mat and walk. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. And what does he say from the cross? Father, forgive them. Why? Why does he do this? So that one day, like that repentant thief on his right, we too will hear those words. Today, you will be with me in paradise. What are the works of Jesus? To reveal God to the world, to humanity, to draw, to help, to bring people, us, to believe in God's powerful and consuming love for his beloved sons and daughters, to save humanity, his people, you and me, as fallen and as broken, as, as struggling as we might be, to save us from our sins. And if we're going to follow Jesus, we've got to do the same. Not to just be forgiven by his works, but to offer that forgiveness to one another, becoming workers with him. You see, this is precisely how we will be able to do even greater works than Jesus. It's easy for God to forgive. He's perfect. He's holy. He's that perfect lover who holds nothing against us. We, on the other hand, tend towards an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. For us, at least for me, forgiveness is kind of a hard thing, right? How many of us have ever said, I'm glad to see they're getting what they deserve? But to be a part of the church, the body of Christ, to be recipients of the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, well then, we're called to be a people, persons, individuals who not only are forgiven, but who forgive, who offer mercy. It's in God's nature to forgive, but only through grace, through the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, through the God who lives within each of us because of our baptisms, we're raised above our fallen human nature that demands an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and we're made able to become like God himself and so to forgive. Who is it that I'm struggling to forgive? Who is it that, to be quite honest, I don't want or care to forgive? Who
Whose forgiveness do I desire? Whose forgiveness do I need? This is the good news. When we receive the body of Christ, we're filled, we're strengthened, we're empowered to both receive forgiveness and to forgive, to be a part of the works of God himself. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. I believe in one God. With our eyes set on the risen Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life, we offer these prayers and petitions. For the church, may we faithfully follow Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life, obeying his command to love one another and showing the world the way to God. We pray to the Lord. For leaders here and abroad, may they work to build structures that bring justice, equality, and care for the poor around the world. We pray to the Lord. For all those who minister in the church, especially deacons, whose ministry is traced back to those who were chosen by the first apostles, we pray to the Lord. For all those whose hearts are troubled, may their fears and anxieties be relieved by the tender, loving care of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for our faith community, may we be renewed in mission and purpose, welcoming the stranger, serving the needy, and proclaiming the good news to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the family of Betty Bean and Lorna Dusick, may they be consoled by the Lord in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the repose of the soul of Janie G. Garcia, and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the needs listed in our parish intention book, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear 
Good and gracious God, we know that you always see us and that you hear every one of our prayers. And so we place our wounded hearts with these needs and desires into your powerful hands, confident that you receive them, and confident that you will answer all that we need in accordance with your holy will, making us ever more worthy of that place you have prepared for us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the Lamb of Sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There. We hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. 